As usual, when we're in Edmonton, After Hours comes to you from the Euler Hall of Fame room at uh, Rogers Place. Uh, probably the last place Bobby Ryan thought he'd find himself <laughs> on this road trip, but neither uh, player nor fan can deny the greatness uh, or the great history of this, uh, of this franchise. So Bobby, thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure, thank you for having me. All right, I guess we should start with the conclusion of uh, the road trip tonight. Uh, you sweep uh, Vancouver, uh, Calgary, and Edmonton for the first time in franchise history. Louis got the first question. Yeah, you know, pretty remarkable the way you guys finished it off, too. Uh, just talk a little bit about where your team's at right now. You just seem to have carried over right where you left off last year. Yeah, I think that was a big part of our training camp, was, was getting back to that level that we finished at. And uh, for us, we didn't have to learn a new system this year coming in. We were, we were comfortable with the way we play and, and fell right back into that rhythm. So uh, we're reaping the benefits of it right now and, and we're sticking to it. Uh, and like you said, this is the first time we've done this in history. That was a challenge for us coming in tonight and, and we're excited we got it done. Well, my gosh, how close the Senators came to getting to the Stanley Cup final last year. Double overtime against the Pittsburgh Penguins, 5.09 into the second overtime. Chris Kunitz delivered Pittsburgh to the final and denied the Ottawa Senators. I just can't imagine uh, how hard it was for you and your teammates to turn the page. So question is, how long did it take before you didn't wake up in the morning saying, I can't believe we lost that game? Uh, a, a, a good couple months at least, and especially when you see them go on to win uh, in the fashion that they did and, and playing as well as they did. Uh, it, it's a gut-wrenching loss. There's no way around that, and, and you, you try to tune it out as much as you can, but there's no way you're not waking up in the morning thinking about the what ifs. Uh, Bobby, if there was a personal consolation for you, it was that you came alive in the postseason after a tough regular schedule. You had three game winners in the playoffs. So the question uh, via Twitter is from Gary Sedin. What personal statement did you make with your performance in the playoffs? Uh, I don't know that I made a, a personal statement. I, for me, I looked at it as a reset. You can, you can kind of wipe the slate clean and get back to work and, and being the player that you want to be and uh, you know so a lot of it I got some good bounces and, and my teammates around me played well but I got back to going to the net a little harder getting into those scoring areas and, and got rewarded for it but it felt like it was never going to come I was really really relieved when it did a little bit. Uh, Louis dug up some interesting video on your number Louis. Yeah you know the change <laughs> back to nine you know that was uh, obviously a successful number for you in Anaheim was it uh, always in the back of your mind to get back into that number? Yes it was yeah and I, that's why I took six to make it easy on fans to switch yeah. that upside down when I did eventually get to go back. Um, well we got the video let's have a look yeah. at it. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah, yeah, you guys really did your homework here in digging some of this up, but yeah, it was, uh, I wish I had had a better, reg better excuse me, regular season after switching back, but uh, like you said, I got to redeem myself a little bit in playoffs, but uh, yeah, nine was always the mission. Uh, Bobby, we know of you that you're not consumed by ego. Uh, we saw a good example of that uh, in the summer of 13 after you were acquired from Anaheim by Ottawa and you hit the streets in the nation's capital and you did some man in the street interviews. I guess we'll start with Bobby Ryan, what he can bring to the team. I think Bobby Ryan is a, um, a great acquisition. I like him. I like his stats. I like his attitude. I like everything about it. Ryan's obviously a goal scorer and Spez is a playmaker, so it seems natural. But what do you think they can do and accomplish if they mold well together right out of the gate? Well, I'd like to see them uh, obviously be both good pluses, even strength. Um, put up, you know, in the 80 to 100 point range each would be uh, would be something I think we're going to need. <laughs> sure, you'd <laughs> like that too. You saw my face when yeah. he said 80 to 100. I, I, uh, so, what are you talking about? <laughs> so there you were, okay. uh, four-time 30-goal scorer at that point in your career, yeah. and they had no idea who they were yeah. talking to. No one recognized you. Surely, over the course of your four seasons in Ottawa, the recognition factor has changed. What's the, it like for you now? The, uh, the anonymity has gone a little bit, which... Uh, I'm okay with playing in a Canadian market. I, I, I do really, really value getting away from that and, and spending my summers away from it. But when you're there, you have to embrace it, especially in a city like Ottawa. The fans are incredible. The people that come up to you uh, are, are so embracive and, and kind of welcome me as one of their own, especially as American, you never know. And uh, they've really taken me in. Louis. Yeah, you know, and that, it's, but that's the personality you have as well, too. You know, you come across as a guy that uh, engages in that. Yeah. Uh, and I think people really feed off that from you. Yeah, you try to. I, I certainly think if you don't take advantage, I mean, the hockey and all that stuff is great, but when you can uh, kind of change people's days, but just by yeah. saying hello at times and, and, and talking hockey, and in Canada, they'll talk hockey all day long. So I enjoy that. And, uh, uh, it's a big part of uh, why I like playing in a market like this so much. Okay, here's some visual proof of your popularity in Ottawa now. Uh, a sign from two seasons ago. Uh, we've lost our monitor here. Is it still on, Paul? 
Okay, because we can't see it. But anyway, Warren Jensen's sons, Cole and Reese, uh, wanted a dog. Um, he tried dissuading them, finally promised them if you scored that night, they'd get a puppy. So deal done when you got your 17th of the year. Uh, what did you think when you saw the sign in warm-up? You know, I just wanted to acknowledge him, and I skated by and gave him kind of a wink, and, and I really hoped I came through for him. Uh, when I did, it was incredible that they showed them on the Jumbotron almost immediately, and you could see... Uh, the dad wasn't too happy with me, uh, but I made up for it because they came back and I, one of the pizza companies in town had said if I scored again the next game, they'd get free pizza for a year. So they got that. And uh, I like to think I, I paid them back a little bit, but I've never been, they've never invited me over for pizza once. <laughs> we saw you with the family and the dog, but they named the dog Bobby. They obviously. did name the dog That's Bobby. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just, I was really happy that they rescued and that was important. Yep. Can you imagine uh, the number of beer leaguers or rec players who think uh, they should have made it, and even today, if they had a chance, they could show an NHL player a thing or two, and it really is an absurd, fa absurd fantasy, and uh, you proved just how absurd with this piece of video, so take us through what's happening here. Um, I, I have no clue. I can't well, see Well, we it, can't see it, right. Okay. Uh, this is uh, when you're working on the monitor. Absolutely manhandle uh, the beer league. Yeah, so so, so yeah. just imagine back to the day you shot that with the beer leaguer, and uh, he was trying to get around you here, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, either, either get the puck from here one or the other but uh you know i left social media just because so many beer leaguers did want to tell me how much they could beat me and do that when i was having a tough time so uh this came out the guy that i did it with was, was a great guy and the company that i did it with was awesome they, they you know wanted to show it and prove it and i, I wanted to go easy and they made me go really hard at it and uh <laughs> did we, you we, ever? We, had a, we had a great day though yeah i did <laughs> yeah, i really did uh, you crushed them a, yeah, couple, a times. couple times but we, we had a lot of fun with it and they were great guys and um I, I would hope we can bring it back at one point, that's for sure. I'd love to do it again. They were fun. So take that. Beer leaguers everywhere who think they have what it takes. Yes, <laughs> take that. I can scrape yeah. back every now and again. Eh? Yeah, I, I asked you before you came on, you know, if you fly fished still, because that was uh, something that I, I get into the odd time too, but I know you did that a little bit, but you said you're really getting into golf now. That's yeah. what you're really starting to. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a four, four or five day a week or during the summer. Yeah. and. Uh, with a little one now, I, we have a daughter that's 16 months, so I, fly fishing is an all-day thing when you go, yep. and, and sometimes it's, it's tough to wade in the river when she's at home, and, and you just want to spend time with her in the off-season. So I've given that up and taken a step back from it, but uh, a couple years ago, I really enjoyed it, and I'm going to try and start going with Nate Thompson a little bit when we're on the road and we can find some spot. But Idaho is just incredible fishing. Yeah. Bobby, in the limited time we have here tonight, we cannot uh, tell or retell the entire compelling story of your childhood, so we'll just summarize it as best we can, and it doesn't do it justice, but um, you're living in Cherry Hills, New Jersey. Your father faced a very serious domestic assault charge. The victim was your mother. Your parents uh, decided to stay together. They fled New Jersey with you. You ended up in California, your father on the run from the law, and when you were 12, the authorities found him, so he went away. Yeah. And from that point on, it was you and your mother, Melody. Yeah. Melody passed away uh, in July of 16, losing her battle with liver cancer. And you wrote uh, a stunning, heartfelt thank you letter to her on the Players' Tribune. I would just say that anyone who ever reads this and doesn't cry <laughs> has no heart. Yeah. I just want to take one excerpt from it. The California Pizza Kitchen. Why does that restaurant mean so much to you? Uh, it was our spot. We we struggled through all the, you know, the financial uh, burdens, especially living in California, trying to play hockey in California, and all that cost money, and my mom took on a lot. She worked in the rink in the morning so I could skate for free at the airlines at night so I could fly for free and on standby, and uh, every two weeks we kind of carved out an afternoon, and we went for that lunch hour special, the Caesar salad and half a pizza or whatever it was, and, uh, and that was our time to, to kind of put all that aside, and that was, that was what we, waited for every two weeks and uh every time i drive by one i kind of uh it's hard not to get emotional about it to be honest with you it's 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 one of those things that uh will continue to resonate with me for the rest of my life well melody did a wonderful job of raising your boy uh you also say in the letter that she gave you advice on girls which <laughs> had to have helped when you uh, met your future wife danielle and then along came daughter riley and that leads us to these two very treasured <laughs> well there's riley yeah, that's and then these girl. These two very treasured pictures, tell us why so treasured. Uh, you know, to be honest, because that's the only one we're ever going to get. And uh, I, with, with what happened and it being such a quick thing, she had never gotten to meet Riley. She wasn't even old enough to fly at this point. And uh, uh, we, got, we got back. We got back in time for her to have two days. And um, the, the only two days, I've, I'm being an only child. It was, it was her first and only granddaughter at this point. So for us, it, I just wanted to see her hold her and, and, and 
Riley's going to miss on that relationship that I had. That meant so much to me. She would have made a great grandmother, and, and she did in the two days that she had. But mm -hmm. uh, um, that's the only picture we're ever going to have, and, and uh, I'll never lose the photo. It, it means a lot to me, and it's up on Riley's wall. And uh, uh, she'll know that uh, we called her Mom on Jersey. She'll know that Mom on Jersey really loved her in the short period of time they had. You know, uh, we all need perspective from time to time on uh, what really matters in life. You have it. You think about Nicole Anderson's battle with cancer last year. How has perhaps all of this perspective helped the Ottawa Senators as opposed to hurting them? It, it's funny with so many storylines, and again, it, it also comes back to playing in a Canadian culture. Sometimes those things can really get pulled apart, and uh, we, we've never let that happen. Uh, our team, and, and it starts with our leader and our coach, and, and he's been good about keeping the room, the room, and everything else separate and private. And uh, you can use it two ways, and we used it to unify us. And, and we lost Craig to, to go be with her for a little while. And, of absence. Yeah, right. yeah. And we, uh, we had guys come in and, and step up. And then when he, we were there to support him, when he came back, we were there to support both of them. That's, that's uh, you know, I think a lot of our team, uh, the run that we had is because we, we might not be the best team on paper, and a lot of nights we aren't, but uh, a lot of nights we're the better team. Bobby, thanks for your time. Really appreciate your eloquence, and uh, it's good to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure, guys. Thanks. Thank Bobby you. Ryan Thank of the much. Ottawa Senators.